Hi, welcome to this week's video. It's Helen here, coming to talk about chapters two and three of The Greatest Secret by Rhonda Byrne, which is um, the book we're reading for the book group at the moment. And those two chapters are these chapters for week two. And um, gosh, there's so much in these two chapters. And yet there's also kind of one thing, uh, the one thing being who you really are. And through the chapters, there are so many different ways of um, that, the, that Rhonda and the fellow contributors are pointing to the fact of who you really are. And I want to start with this, um, this quote from Locke Kelly. So close you can't see it. So subtle your mind can't understand it. So simple you can't believe it. And so good you can't accept it. And that's from his book, Shift Into Freedom. And um, yeah, it really makes sense because the mind loves complexity. It loves being drawn out into the world of all these fascinating objects and people and things to pay attention to. And so it misses the fact that there's something within which all this is appearing. It's like the, um, in fact, it's mentioned in, in this chapter, Rupert talks about the, the white paper on which the words are written. You know, we're so drawn to the words, we've, we miss the fact the white paper's there. And so with this too, the mind is so drawn to all the objects of experience it misses the fact that awareness is the foundation of all of it. And part of this, um, this chapter begins to uh, point us towards how we've become confused, believing that we are the body. And that's one of the core beliefs that covers over the fact that we are awareness. Which is, by the way, the greatest secret. It really is that simple. That's why it gets most... <laughs> I'm kind of brushing over it myself here. You are awareness already and always have been. And you've learnt that you're a body. You've learnt that you're a mind. You've learnt that you're a name and everything that goes along with that. These are learnings, these are beliefs, these are things that we've, we've gathered over the years. And it's these that hide the fact and, and veil the fact that we are awareness through all of it. So, um, so one part of the chapter talks about recognising how um, your body is not aware. So go to your body right now. Notice the sensations that are in your body. So maybe bring your awareness to the soles of your feet. Feel that tingling in the soles of your feet. Or bring awareness to your hands and feel that awareness, feel that tingling in your hands, become aware of that, that energy you can feel in your hands. And notice with both of those, so do your feet know that they're tingling? Are they in some way sentient? Are they in some way alive and that they've got a beingness of their own? Or your hands, are they a being in their own right that they know that they are tingling? No, both of these, awareness knows the tingling in the feet or the energy in the hands. Awareness is what everything is known by. We've never known anything outside of awareness. It's literally impossible. Awareness is the constant. It's the bedrock we've been looking for. It's the security we've been looking for. When we've felt insecure and we've gone out into the world to try and find more security with a person or a job or a house or money or anything, anything out there, we've never found it because no thing out there is secure. It all comes and goes. The security we've been looking for is knowing ourselves as this awareness which never comes and goes. It's been there all the time, veiled for sure to greater or lesser extents, or seemingly veiled at least. All it is really is more activity or less activity. More activity makes it seem like the awareness is gone, or that really, really I'm just this limited body and I've really feel insecure. In the absence of all that, the awareness just stands revealed. 
same as in deep sleep. That's what you experience in deep sleep. Pure awareness with nothing veiling it, nothing colouring it, no activity, just who you are in purity. So I invite you to stay curious about that. Stay curious about what is it that's aware of whatever's happening in your life. There's only one constant, that's what you're looking for. Let me know what you notice. I'd love to hear from you and see you next week. Lots of love.